Bonnie Watson. I'm a translator from Mandarin to English and I'm also a writer. Literature is one of the greatest contributors to cultural exchange between different countries, different peoples, different cultures. The first time I went to China was actually to go to Beidar. I, I had never been before, I was 20 years old and I packed my suitcase for two years and just landed in Beijing, didn't speak a word of Chinese. Went to the literature class, did the reading for the first week and I remember it was Lucian's Diary of a Madman translated by William Lyle and I loved it so much that I couldn't sit still. I kept stopping people and being like, have you, have you seen this? This is amazing. So I went and basically kicked down the um, professor's door who was um, teaching the literature course and said, you have to let me change majors. And then I started trying to teach myself to translate properly so that I could access all the things that haven't been translated yet. The third year of my PhD, Su Tong came to stay with us for a semester. And he held this month-long seminar series where he spoke to us about a series of short stories that he's written. As we went through the seminars that he held, I provided English translations of the short stories as we were going along. Su Tong is quite well known for his portrayal of women characters and his portrayal of feminine consciousness, which is really unusual for a male writer. In the series of short stories that I translated, actually, there's one particular story called Pretty as Angels. And it is about a friendship between two young girls and how that friendship becomes strained and changes over time as their lives go in different directions. And how ultimately the experience of growing into a feminine body of growing from a child to a woman who is someone that people will look at, you know, as an object of prettiness. I have translated works from other Chinese writers. More recently, I just worked on my first novel, which was called Souls Left Behind by Fan Wu. I cried several times while I was translating it. Beautiful story about this young man, David, it's 1917, he runs away from home and he ends up in France during World War I digging trenches and fixing trains, um, laying the railways, really helping with the war effort in France for the Allies. And now I didn't know about this history of Chinese labourers during World War I. I spoke to Fan Wu the author a lot as we were working through the translation and she had spoken to historians, she had been to archives, she's been all over the place researching this and it's a really really underappreciated, underanalyzed, undertold part of history. The process of translation differs depending on which author you're working with. So Fan always described translation as a mode of rewriting which I thought was really interesting. So for example, in Souls Left Behind, in Fan's novel, the characters are constantly singing. At one point there is a song that's sort of carnivalesque and it rhymes and he's using, you know, bamboo clappers to talk. And so I wanted to maintain the rhythm and maintain the rhyme. So naturally I ended up having to divert a little bit, change a little bit what these sentences were saying so that I could keep the rhythm and the rhyme. I'm currently working on a short story by Yao Amei. It's going to be a novella made of four short stories and each short story is being translated by a different translator. So I'm really excited to see how this collection comes together and if you can recognise the different quirks of each translator in each short story. Contemporary Chinese literature really is a developing discipline. Whenever someone asks me what I do, and I say, oh, I'm a science fiction writer, I translate Chinese literature, they go, three-body problem. So the beauty of that and the popularity of the three-body problem is that now more and more current Chinese authors and Chinese science fiction authors in particular are being translated into English and getting this really warm 
reception in the US and the UK. My debut novel, Lessons in Birdwatching, is coming out on the 8th of August. To construct a new world for my science fiction novel, I thought about, well, how will people 2,000 years from now misunderstand what we were doing today? And how will they use these histories? For example, uh, my main characters live in a copy of the Pagoda on Peking University campus because they've seen pictures of it, but they don't actually know what it is. Not only is literature in the act of writing this very individual mode of expressing the human experience and what it means to be yourself, what it means to have grown up in a certain area, been through certain things, but there is a certain universality to it in that there is always expressions of pain, of suffering, of triumph, of love, of heartbreak, things that we've all been through.